Okay, hello and welcome to another cast for StarCast TV. I'm IRK's Royal Blue, and joining me is my co-caster Shroom of Doom. And today we're going to be casting a TVP, so Terran vs Protoss, and we've got here Snow in the bottom right as the blue Protoss, and we've got his opponent Light as the red Terran in the top right. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a great match. Uh, both players, obviously, Light and Snow, definitely really, really strong players. Uh, top tier players, both of them have been, uh, they both played in the eight, multiple ASLs, in fact, and have gotten pretty far in both of them, so definitely looking to see a great game today. Uh, the map will be Polypoid, a uh, great map, really standard map. Uh, so definitely, yeah, I mean, definitely looking to see some good games. Yeah, Polypoint definitely a very standard map. You see it all the time in the map pool nowadays. Um, the new itself... fighting spirit, man. Yeah. The new fighting spirit. Yeah, the the lack of a third gas uh, for Terran could be an issue. Uh, I think that's one of the drawbacks to this map is that third base is kind of high um, on the high ground. You can defend it with the, the ramp, but you don't have a gas there. So Terran does need to take, I think, an additional base if they want to play that uh, upgraded and like late game style. Yeah, uh, looks like a gate scout coming out of snow. Uh, he's going to unfortunately probably get last scout. It's a little bit unfortunate for him. Sacrificing a bit of economy for uh, for better scouting. But, uh, but, you know, again, right, he's going to scout last, so a little bit unfortunate coming from him. Ooh, we do see second pylon going down from Snow, so actually this signals that he wants to open up with Zealot. Well, to me, anyway, right? Because usually you would go um, um, the Vespian Geyser, you tap the gas after the first... Uh, mm, pylon. okay. Yeah, and you see he is actually going Zealot first. And, uh, oh man, this is so unfortunate for uh, Snow anyway, I mean, Light's gonna get first scout, so he's, he's gonna be able to even see, like, the Zealot coming out first and everything, so he'll be way prepared for this. Yeah, so he definitely gets a nice scout up of the Protoss base there with his initial SCV, and he's able to see exactly when the Zealot comes out, so he's gonna be prepared for that entering its base. It's still gonna come down to, kind of, control, I think? Because he, he only just has this Sim City, he doesn't have a, a bunker up yet or anything like that. So he's gonna have to micro his initial Marines against this Zealot. So there might be a time here for Snow to try to get some damage done, but it's definitely a big win for uh, Light to be able to scout this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we can see Light uh, bringing SCV down to block the ramp. I mean, this is as good as it as it gets. Uh, let's see what uh, Snow can get done. Well, it looks like he's not even going to contest that. So, yeah. So the only damage uh, Snow has inflicted on Light is a you know a little bit of lost mining time from two SCVs, but that doesn't justify like uh, okay, look at this two zealots being made from Snow. That does not justify two zealots being made. I mean, Snow has mm -hmm. to get some kind of damage done, uh, but I, I don't know if he can. Light's ready for it. Yeah, Light pulling those SCVs and placing them on the ramp has really uh, denied this Zella uh, aggression from doing anything. And not wanting to invest too heavily in an attack, Snow has decided to pull his Zealots back and just kind of camp outside of the Terran base. Uh, Light though, sending a, uh, an SCV up to the third base location, or actually to the um, 3 o'clock base. And it's going to get picked off, or scouted anyway, by this Dragoon, and denied. Nice positioning by Snow. High IQ. He knew that uh, Light was going to try to sneak a scout out, and uh, he predicted the, pa the path of scouting. Very well played by Snow. Looks, okay, ooh, a little bit of Ursadon violence there. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, I, I do think uh, Light will transition into kind of like an FD. Perhaps you can see that he's going, he's getting his first siege, and he's going to get the Vulture behind it for sure. Mine's getting researched. He has seven Marines. Yeah, yeah here like, he goes. Um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, it looks like he is making that FD push that you were calling for with his seven Marines, and he's got this one siege tank. He's got a, a Vulture on the way as well with mines, so that's going to help him uh, with his early Dragoons that he sees from Protoss. 
That being said, it does look like he's being too aggressive with this push, at least for the time being, just kind of using it to get his SCV out onto the map. But this SCV isn't going to get too far as it is going to run into these two Dragoons and get picked off before reaching the Protoss. And Protoss behind this taking his uh, natural nexus as well as uh, teching to a robotics and adding on a second gateway. Yeah, um, I really thought that he was going to make some kind of push. He had uh, seven marines in a tank, right? Uh, I do think that he could have gotten something done, but the Protoss would have had three Dragoons and two Zealots, so uh, I mean, it would have come down to micro. So I guess like choosing a little bit more conservative approach, you know, which is completely fine as well, you know? I mean, you don't have to make the push, right? But I just thought with such a heavy investment, he was going to, you know, make something happen, right? Yeah, when you see those seven Marines, you would think that uh, Terran's going to try to be aggressive with those Marines, because now, what good are they? They're, they're really not that useful the later the game goes on for Terran. Um, he, we see he's not even really constructing a bunker or anything like that. Just going to use these Marines. Oh, and here he has a second tank, and it looks like he is going to start pushing down to the south across the map. Okay, looks like he's hesitating. He's like, he's bringing back his tanks. He's bringing them forward and bring them back. All right, if Light does make an attack, he has to like, he has to go now, right? Because time is on the Protoss side in these kind of like early time pushes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, obviously he doesn't have to do, make, make an attack as well. Right? He could just try to get a fast third or something. But uh, yeah, I mean, as you were saying earlier though, it, like the cost of making all these Marines and doing nothing with it, you know, it does hurt light, you know, like as the game goes on, the Marines do become basically paperweights, right? Yeah, then they might see some use when it comes to defending against a Reaver, which it does look like the Reaver is coming out now for uh, our Protoss player. He did go for Observer first, and now he's bringing his Dragoons across the map to try to posture into the Terran's base. Meanwhile, Terran's actually circumventing this with his uh, Marine and Tank and Vulture force. So there, right. it looks like we might have a little bit of a base trade here. Yeah, it does. It does really look like that. Um, ooh, nice by Snow, you know, stealing off his natural with the fourth pylon, just slowing down the pro, um, the Terran push a little bit. And it looks like Snow's not gonna not gonna go for the base trade. He's gonna bring back his dragoons and he's gonna try to um, try to pincer this Terran army. Okay, the Reaver is only halfway done right now, so. Light does have a little bit of time. He breaks down that one pylon, but I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay, he looks like he's going to try to come back and. The lack take of an observer. Yeah, no observer with his force for snow, however, and he is looking like he's going to run into some mines here eventually, as the Terran's doing a great job of kind of forcing him back. And these Dragoons kind of camping out on this ramp now. Oh, and they've triggered a mine. Oh, man. And so now he's lost two Dragoons just there. And so he, he doesn't have much but this Reaver. That was huge by like getting those like Dragoons. There's no flanking capability by Snow now. He's gonna fight straight up. Getting that shuttle as well. I think Light's got this. Yeah, that was huge taking out that shuttle there with the Marines. So those Marines did prove their effectiveness here. But this Dragoon getting right on top of the tanks, forcing them to unsiege. Uh, if there's more Dragoons on the way, maybe he can clean this up, but here comes more Vultures being flooded in. Yeah, this looks dicey here for Snow. GG. Yeah, Snow GG's that. Did you see that last volley by the tanks? Taking on a swath of probes. Yeah, it was definitely game after that. All right, so there it is for game one. Let's get into game number two. I'll remake. Yeah, quick victory, uh, quick victory from Light. Um, that was actually, you know, what that that was, that was really, really good timing from his uh from his push, you know. Yeah, he hit just before Reaver, and he did a great job of uh denying that uh. Protoss army that came back from the counter-attack, that getting shut down and running into those mines really kind of turned the game in Terran's favor, I think. Sure. Alright, so uh, this will be the second game. This first set, and it will be... 
Snow spawning up in the top right as the blue Protoss, and Light spawning on the bottom right as the red Terran. The map will be uh, Circuit Breakers. Classic map. So, yeah, definitely, again, hoping to see some good games coming out of these two top tier ASL level players. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed that last game. It was very quick, and there was some pretty good micro from uh, Light showing a good timing attack, really, where it didn't seem like there was much of a timing, but he managed to get over there to the Protoss base before the Reaver was really able to be too effective out on the map. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. Um, yeah, I thought he was going to do an FD or something, right? But it looks like he was just a bit of a delayed FD, or a strong FD, right, with two tanks. Yeah, I think he waited until like three tanks and he got all his like Vulture Speed, Mines, and then Siege Mode. Seemed to work out. Let's see if he goes for something similar this game. We see already uh, Snow opting for that gas instead of the second pylon, right? Uh, so a little variation from last game that you noticed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Second pylon before gas usually signals Zell first, so I don't think uh, Snow is going to do Zell first. I mean, he could still, but uh, I kind of doubt it. And, uh, you know, it's a good thing that he's not doing it, though, because if you look at Light, right, he's going to get first scout. So, so if, if uh, Snow was going Zell first, right, he would probably be hard countered. Yeah, Light's been very lucky so far with his scouting, so he's going to be happy to see that he's able to scout Snow on his first try here. And seeing the Cybernetics core, second pylon, everything looks very normal here at this time for the Protoss base. So nothing too out of the ordinary for Light. He is getting his own uh, gas and most likely will be throwing down a factory here pretty soon. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a wall as you can see, uh, but uh, it's actually not going to be needed <laughs> since there won't be any Zealot aggression. Ooh, good moving shot, Micro on that probe. Are, are you watching this probe? Yeah, the probe there, super probe gets a kill. Uh, the SCB was actually running to this Marine but now the Marine has to turn tail back to his base to try to fend off this scouting probe. Uh, so Protoss, their workers are pretty strong here. Oh, and there the probe is being uh, running into the Marine. That was great moving shot, great micro by Snow. Of course, Snow being known for his uh, great micro, especially with Reavers, right? So, uh, you, know, you know, you said that probes are pretty strong workers. I think that's the first time I've ever heard that. <laughs> The probes have shields, that's what makes them strong, I think. And here we see again a really nice moving shot from Snow. He's taken out another SCB, already got it down to 15 HP. 10. Yeah, this is oh, this just gonna Incredible. <laughs> incredible moving shot from uh, from Snow. Okay, it looks like he's gonna bully his way up uh, to the ramp with his Dragoon, but three Marines on a ramp, man, that's the magic number, you know. You can't break three Marines with only uh, one Dragoon, so the yeah. Dragoon will back off a bit for now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is great scouting now from Snow. You can see Snow is actually going for robotics, so I do feel like he's going to go like one base Reaver. Yeah, he or, throws on a second like gateway. That. Yeah, or like a Bulldog or something, right? So, without the Snow not being able to scout the natural, without being able to see if there's an expansion or get any kind of intelligence whatsoever, right? This is going to blindside him. Well, both these players are one basing right now, and the difference is Snow was able to see Light hasn't taken an expansion, but Light hasn't been able to get over to Snow's expansion and see that there's no Nexus over there. So like yeah. you said, this might end up blindsiding him when he goes for his two-factory push here with Vultures coming across with mines and rallying units. If he ends up running into this two-gate goon production, Yeah, we, yeah we, we do see Snow going for that observatory instead. I think that was almost a reactive call because he saw, he saw like a light uh, coming out. I, I do think he would much rather have gone uh, Reaver, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Observer is better for his position. And yeah, like, uh, you know, what I was saying earlier about being like the blindsiding, right? Light's going to be completely blindsided. He, he's got two factories, right? I mean, I mean he's got to make something happen. I mean, a two factory turn, you've got to get some damage done, but... 
Snow's Bill, two gay robo, it's gonna hard counter him. Yeah, this is exactly the hard counter to what uh, we're seeing from Light. It will come down to some nice micro though. If we can get maybe a siege mode or, or something like that going on here close to the Protoss base, that's the way Light can do it. But right now he's just got a lot of vultures, only a few tanks, and he's going to have to trade against these six Dragoons and one Observer, which is out now. So these this Observer should make these vultures with their minds a lot less effective here. And we have two more Dragoons joining the fight. So Snow is able to cancel his Nexus, and now he's pulling his Dragoons back farther and farther until all his mines are exhausted. And now he only really lost one Dragoon. So Terran's got to retreat now. Yeah, beautiful play by Snow. Completely crushing that um, that push from Light. And now Poros is in a dominating position. Just dominating position. Look at the Siege mode isn't even done. So Poros is going to be able to pressure the Terran. Terran is in some trouble. Definitely in some trouble right now. Uh, we could be seeing a quick uh, game. Oh, look, look, look. One Dragoon on the ramp on Snow's base. Did not yeah. those three Vultures from coming in. Beautiful play by Snow. Uh, I, I don't know how Terran can come back from this, man. Uh, the Protoss is so far ahead. Dude, if he even gets this Sparax, man, that would be huge. I mean, Terran just can't afford it. He can't afford it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, losing the Sparax in the late game doesn't matter that, that much. But in the early game, right? Definitely hurts. Yeah, we see Terran placing his command center up on the high ground so they are looking to expand now but they've built these two factories and like you said that timing push really didn't do anything so Portos was able to keep up its production add on all of the probes it needed and now it's actually getting a reaver out so what's Terran gonna do now to counter this reaver there's really no anti-air in sight there's an armory that's about well, one third finished so he's gonna have to wait for that to get maybe Goliath out to counter this reaver but I don't think that's gonna be ready in time yeah yeah snow is in a dominating position and with snow's reaver micro oof, it's gonna be a tough call man it's gonna be a tough call for light to hold this off um you know reavers with dragoons hit like at the same time this combination really really powerful especially in the early game or if he loses one tank and he does he, he loses one tank but let's see if if uh, terran can come around and uh, trap these dragoons and and pick him off. That would be huge, but here comes the shuttle with the Reaver. Wow, takes out three vultures immediately. So this Reaver is arriving just in time, and these tanks were not expecting this, I don't think. Pushing down into the low ground is not where they want to be right now. And the Reaver's heading straight to the main now after taking some pot shots on them in the net. And now it's going to land here. The Zealous ta tanking the hits takes out that first tank. Huge engineering bay is done at least for uh, light, but that's another tank. Wow. Okay, first Goliath is out for uh, light though, so. Ah, uh, and another tank falls, so this is looking really bad for Terran. Losing all your tanks this early after you went for a two factory, and now there's really not a lot of mining going on for Terran. He's just hiding his SCBs from this Reaver. Finally, does take out that shuttle. But how is he going to clean out this Reaver? He's lost all of his tanks. Well, it's injured, so he does get the Reaver with the Goliath. Y you know, you know what? I mean, the Reaver did enough damage. Did this, I mean, he got like what, like three tanks, full SCVs, delayed the mining a ton. I mean, I honestly thought Snow, he was in a position to end the game actually with that Reaver. So kudos to Light for actually staying alive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, all things considered, the Terran is still so. So far behind, I I can't see how he's going to come back from this third coming down from Snow. Stargate already done. We're, I expect to see the the, the tribunal, Arbiter uh, tribunal, mm -hmm. down any moment now. And, and and look, I mean, Terran has two base, no tech, and like Arbiter is going to come out soon already, right? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing even DTs on the way, and there's no comsat, there's no scans, and like you said, Arbiter will be uh what. It looks like he's going for here considering he does have the stargate and the templar archives so with the arbiter out yeah there's there's no even starports just now starting so you know science vessels are a ways off now too as well right and uh, i do think these two dts are going to be like 
shuttled in. Uh, you can see Snow has gotten another shuttle, so maybe you think of some DT uh, drop Ras play. It will be effective if he go if he drops in the main. There there is a turret in the main, but it's pretty far away from the command center and the other critical infrastructure. So the DTs do get into the main, could be potentially game ending. No comps out, and you know no comps out because he lost that barracks. Now yeah, he's gonna make his academy. He just finished building another barracks right now. So now we do see the shuttle. Sharking its way up to the parent base. Two Goliaths in position to stop the, the shuttle, but the two Templars do get out and... Oh no, yeah, this yeah. is going to be terrible damage by the Terran. I think this might just end him. Yeah, this looks really bad. The Terran's forced to retreat to the missile turret to defend against these Dark Templar, but in the meantime, the Dragoons are busting in the front, and now these tanks sieging by their turret. We see a science facility almost done, but look at this. He's lifted off all of his buildings in the net. He's trying to hide his command center. Uh, but what's he going to do now? This is not the position you want to be in as Terran. How's he going to clear out his net? He's got these DTs in his main mineral line, even. Yeah, the academy's like one-third started. This is not going to work. GG. Well, I can uh, definitely say that game came down to Snow's great probe micro, you know, denying all the scouting and like basically, uh, you know, basically allowing him to hard counter uh, Light's build, you know. Yeah, I think you got it, man. Well, that's it for our first two games. So thank you all for joining us, and we'll hope to see you in the next video. That's it for me, IRK Royal Blue, and thank you for joining me and my co-caster, Shuma Doom. Thank you all.